welcome. This is a lot different than the other signings that I've done in the past. Um, so just bear with me. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Dr. Shields. I'm the early childhood and teaching as profession instructor at Bryan County High School. Um, thank you for joining us today. Like I said, this is a lot different than the signings we've done in the past. Um, but hey, everything's been different since March 13th, so we're just gonna get through it. Um, I wanna welcome some of our guests that are here with us today. Um, we have Miss Mary Ruth Ray, and if you'll just kind of wave so people will know who you are. She is our page representative. She always comes in and speaks to my kids about different things about education and always comes to my signings. Um, Miss Paula Clifton, she's the early childhood instructor at Ogeechee Tech. Miss um, Elisa Lecky, did I say that correct? Okay. Um, she is the assistant dean and faculty member for the Georgia Southern College of Education. We have Miss Culverhouse, Bryan County High School Teacher of the Year and Star Teacher, Miss Frazier. She is a first year teacher um, at Joseph Martin Elementary School in Liberty County, and I invited her because she is one of my one of my students that I had a couple years ago that just finished and started teaching this year. Um, I would also like to. Thank all the faculty and staff, Ms. Chastain, Mr. Holloway, everybody who has taken time out of their day um, to join us. Ms. Lewis, uh, Ms. Lewis is Amber's teacher at Lanier Primary School where she does her internship. And we have Ms. Meeks, who is Kaylee's teacher at Bryan County Middle School. And Ms. Chastain is on here because she was mentioned in Ray Anna's um, letter because Rihanna is not in any of the education classes but she has chosen to become an educator so good for her. Um, we're going to start the program with with Miss Mary Ruth and um, she's just going to give y'all some words of wisdom some encouragement she normally has great certificates for y'all through page but since we're doing this via zoom we'll get those at a later time. So Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Shields, for inviting me. Can everybody hear me okay? Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Um, I'm outside, obviously. If the wind gets to be an issue, y'all let me know. But um, so I'm just going to talk to the girls real quick uh, and say, first of all, welcome to the profession. Um, and, and you know what? If teaching is in your blood, you just got to do it okay and, and those of you who are on i see the heads nodding. and so um i came to education as a second career my mama was a teacher so i swore i'd never be one if y'all know how that goes right um but uh, so i actually majored in psychology i went to work in the field of advertising did that for a few years and it was fun for a while but girls listen to me when i tell you this okay because it's easy to look at other friends who are going into various businesses and professions and it's easy to second guess yourself and say, have I done the right thing? But let me tell you, while I enjoyed my brief time in advertising, deep down, it just wasn't fulfilling. And, and I don't know at age 18 if that means anything to you, but I, it just was not deeply satisfying. And I knew deep down in my heart that I was drawn to the classroom. And when I um, came, I had to come back, go to Georgia Southern, get certified. And when I got to that classroom, it was like for the first time in my life, I was being myself, if that makes sense. It kind of looking back on it in the business world, it felt like I was playing dress up and going to somebody else's life every day in that office. But when I got in the classroom, I knew that that was me. So I hope that means something to you. But getting a little more practical, what you're facing the next few years in college, let me just tell you this. I never met a syllabus that I didn't fear, okay? You know that first day in class, the professor gives you the syllabus, it's the scariest looking thing I've ever seen, okay? No psycho movie ever compared to a syllabus to me. But you know what? I still, I did it. So, you know that old saying about how do you eat an elephant? Do y'all know? No. One bite at the time. Okay, <laughs> and that's how you're gonna tackle that syllabus, one assignment at the time. And, um, and when you get down and when you get frustrated and when you start questioning, am I doing the right thing? Do I need to change my major? 
that's when you call Dr. Shields or call one of these teachers that you work with in the classroom or call me. Dr. Shields will give you my number and we will talk you off the ledge. We do it all the time. Okay. And if you're a member of Paige, call one of our attorneys. They talk teachers off the ledge all the time. <laughs> so we're proud of you. Hey, let me tell you something else related to this coronavirus. Paige has been in touch with thousands of teachers all over the state and getting their reactions and they've completed surveys and we hear all the stuff, how hard it was to switch all of a sudden to digital learning and you know how hard it is to try to, to teach and homeschool your own kids at the same time. But you know what the most common comment that we got from or we're getting from teacher kids? They say this. I miss my kids. I mean, what other profession can you go into where you fall in love with the people you're serving? So that's what you have to look forward to. So you do whatever it takes in the next four years to make that happen for yourself. So congratulations. I won't take any more of y'all's time. And if you need us at Paige, you call on us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mary Ruth. All right, next up, we're gonna have Ms. Mykia Frazier. Like I said, um, this is her first year as a teacher. Um, so she's gonna give y'all just a little bit of insight on what it's like to be a recent graduate, brand new teacher, coronavirus, going into graduate school, correct? So I will hand it over to Ms. Frazier. See. I'm going to switch computers here. Can you hear me now? Yes, you're good. Okay, you can hear me? Yes, good. Okay, awesome. So again, hi everybody. As Dr. Shields said, I am Mykia Frazier. Um, I am a first year teacher at Joseph Martin Elementary School. I teach fourth grade language arts and writing which are two of my most favorite subjects. Um, as Dr. Shields said, I went through the ECE program in high school and went on to um, Spelman College and I got my Bachelor of Arts in Education. And I'm currently working on a Master of Elementary Education at Georgia Southern University. So my first year has definitely been like an experience simply because um, I've had to deal with everything involving moving from seeing my students every day to now not seeing them at all. So that has been something that has completely changed my perspective of education. Um, but what I want to just kind of get um, you all to know is students every day to now. So that has been something that. Um, but what I want to just kind of get is education is a fair product of family of educators. I have aunts that are teachers. My mother has done everything in education from being a paraprofessional to a teacher to an assistant principal, curriculum specialist. She's a middle school principal for 19 years and this is her first year as a high school principal. So of course, I've pretty much been with her along the ride, just really understanding how education impacts our students. Um, I have to say that I'm excited to see you all choosing your pathway in education, mainly because this is not um, a career that a lot of people view as one of the most noteworthy, believe it or not, although educators are mainly the basis of our foundation. Um, I've wanted to be a teacher, like I said, for as long as I can remember. Um, I can say that with education, you definitely get out what you put in. Um, I had the opportunity to go to my dream college, so I just want you to make sure that when you choose your institution that you're going to, you make sure it's a place where you can learn, um, a place where you can really thrive. Um, as I said earlier, education is a career choice that a lot that is really frowned upon by a lot of people. Um, I can't even recall the amount of times as a high school graduate, star student, top three percent of my class, everybody's like, "Are you really going to be a teacher?" Um, yes, most definitely, because I couldn't imagine um, doing anything else, being anything else, because this truly has my passion. Um, Something else I want you to know is future educators, I'm letting you know now that first and foremost, as I said earlier, education is one of those things where you're in it for the outcome, not the income. As much as I would love to be a billionaire teacher, that's just not something that's happening right now. Um, however, um, I feel that the smiles that I see on my kids' faces, um, watching them learn something new, that makes me much more rich in many more other ways um, money could never compare to 
um, the experiences that I have with my students. Um, as you begin your college career, I want you to remember a few things in terms of education. The first thing I want you to remember is when you go to college on your campuses, make your presence known. Um, when you arrive on campus, allow your love of education to be seen by others. Be proud that you're an education major. Be proud that you're a future educator. Uh, make sure that you're becoming members of campus organizations that are affiliated with education, such as um, the Georgia Association of Educators student program. We had it at my school, and it was just a community of educators that were really passionate about what we did. Uh, make sure that as a future educator, you're vocal concerning issues in education and policies that relate to children. As education majors, when anything comes up in education, they look to you to be the expert at all of it because, you know, that is your career field. Uh, make sure that you're active and engaged in your major and events that consist of other future educators. Most of all, stay focused. Um, education is a major that's very detailed and it takes a lot of hard work. Um, stay committed because remember, we're in it for the outcome, not the income. Many people see educators and they think that all we do all day is color and play games and play Kahoot and quizzes all day. Um, but we're much more than that, as we know. Um, it takes an immense amount of hard work um, and dedication to be an impactful educator for our students. Um, just be sure that you're creating community with the people that are in your classes because becoming an educator actually takes a village of people to help you along the way. Um, and there's nothing like having a cohort member that has all the same classes, you all are doing everything together to, re excuse me, to really have someone to lean on while you're working on uh, your career in education. Um, in closing, I just want you to know that you're on the path to the best, best profession that there is. It really does not get any better than being an educator. Um, we're the profession that makes all other professions possible, literally. Um, you have the opportunity to change the world through students that will one day mean the world to you. As a first year teacher, I didn't know just how much I would learn to love these children. Um, and as we talked about earlier, now not seeing their faces every day is actually breaking my heart because I've learned to just, they've become literally a part of me. So that's something just to know that with what we do, we really do change the world. Um, I challenge you to, of course, enjoy but just stay focused and understand that your work most definitely extends beyond um, that four years on campus. This is um, definitely a lifetime commitment to something that's bigger than all of us, making sure that the future of our world um, looks how we want it to. We want to ensure that our students know that within our classrooms, they're safe, they're cared for, and we're producing citizens that will make our world a better place. Um, as I've said before, this is just my first year, of course, crazy, but I couldn't see myself doing anything else, being anything else, because I've just been so passionate um, about education. Um, if there's ever anything I can do for you, no matter what it is, anything, I've been in the place where I need lesson plans. I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this. Someone please help. Um, so if you need lesson plans, if you need help figuring out anything, Dr. Shields has my contact information that I'm sure she won't mind giving you. Um, definitely let me know. I started a teacher Instagram. So if you have Instagram, follow me at Hey Miss Frazier. I document my teaching journey, which is something that's also really cool, especially now in our distance learning days. Um, so today, just know that you're making a commitment um, and as a lifetime investment in the lives of children. So, you know, when you put that pen to paper saying, I'm going to be an education major, I'm going to be a teacher, just know that with that commitment, you are changing the world and impacting our children. I just want you all to know I'm really proud of you, and I'm excited to see what amazing educators you will become. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Frazier. Um, next, I'm going to um, introduce the students to you and tell you just a little bit about them. Um, but the, our first one's going to be Kaylee Bland. If you'll wave, Kaylee. Um, Kaylee is the daughter of Gina De Cristiaforo, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. I apologize. <laughs> Um, she will be attending either GSU or Point University to pursue her degree in middle grades. Um, she has chosen education because she wants to be able to make a change in the children's lives. She chose middle grade specifically because she believes middle school is an impressionable time for a child and wants to be there for those children during that time. When asked who inspired her, she named a couple, couple of teachers that are here with us today. Kayla, do you recognize anybody? that you specifically put down? Everybody. Huh? Anyone in particular though? So she um, named Bennett and? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I know it's hard to see on the Zoom. 
Yes. So she named her um, eighth grade math teacher, Ms. Donaldson, who I found was at Bryan County Middle School, and I had a so she could be here with us today. And then Ms. Bennett, her ninth and twelfth grade high school math teacher. Um, so that is Kaylee. Um, Amber Nurroth is our second student that's going to be signing today. She is the daughter of Wendy Nurroth and plans to attend Aguichi Technical College to study early childhood education. Um, she has chosen education because she loves children. And then our final student is Rayanna Davidson down in the corner. Um, she is the daughter of Christy Davidson and she plans to attend GSU and UGA to earn her degree in agricultural education. When asked why education, um, why she chose education, she, that she said that she really never saw herself as an educator, but as she advanced um, through high school um, and in her different classes, she realized how much she liked to lead her peers. Um, and so that's why she wants to go into education. When asked who inspired her, she named a few of BCHS's very own, Miss Chastain, of course, um, Ms. Dyson and Ms. Martin, who I believe are all three here with us today. Um, so these students um, each have their certificates, right, ladies? Thank you to yeah. Ms. Brown and Ms. Um, Blocker. They were mailed out a week and a half ago and did not receive them, so we had to hand deliver them today. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar, I'm just gonna read off what the certificate says. So ladies, um, if you have them, sign them right now. If not, if you will sign them, take a picture of yourself with them and send that to me so we can get it up on social media. Um, but the certificate says, I blank, and each certificate has the student's name already typed in it, am committing to be a successful Georgia educator. Understand that this is not a legal binding agreement, but a great way to express my commitment to my future career pathway. Um, so again, if you'll just sign that, take a picture, um, send it to me, either text message or thank you, Amber, um, or to my email, and we'll get those up on social media. Um, Ms. Culverhouse, who is our Teacher of the Year and Star Teacher, um, is going to give you some more words of encouragement. Sure. So I am in my 18th year of teaching. Um, I, too, took a break. Um, in the middle of my teaching career and I, I went back. I hated my break. I miss kids. I miss teaching. So um, I, I want to reiterate something Miss Frazier said earlier. Without, without us, without teachers, without you being teachers, all other professions wouldn't really be possible. So you as a teacher, you have to be an expert in not only teaching and delivering a skill to students, but you have to know, you have to be an expert in reading and writing and math and study skills. You have to be a nurturer. You have to be a communicator. You have to be a motivator, a psychologist, a behavior specialist, a nurse, a referee, a coach, a parent, a student. And today you have to be an expert in distance learning technology. So if that doesn't scare you, I don't, I don't know what will, <laughs> but in turn, the students that you teach will go on to be doctors and builders and welders and nurses, politicians, coders, astronauts, sales reps, even teachers or any number of millions of career choices that are available. It's your influence that's gonna carry them forward like nobody else. But sometimes you may never know it. They may never show it. They may never tell you, but you may lose track of your students after they grow up, but you need to go into this knowing that your influence is evident in every success they attain and every goal that they master. So in deciding to become a teacher, you're going to notice that the hours are long, the pay is low, sometimes you are ignored, sometimes you are belittled, you are asked to do more than you're able to do for the sixth time every week. Um, you shoulder the burdens of each of your children that you teach and there are going to be days when you're going to leave your classroom mentally and physically drained and you're going to question yourself. But somehow, somewhere at the end of the day, it's worth it. It's worth the sweat. It's worth the anxiety. It's worth all the effort because your legacy lives on in every student that passes through your door. Your lessons provide the foundation. 
Your high expectations teach them the value of hard work. You get to nurture them during their most difficult times and the skills they acquire from your classroom provide them with endless choices and possibilities. So I know you've probably had a teacher that inspired you. I know you have had teachers that have motivated you. And I know all of you, because I've had all of you, <laughs> I know you've had a teacher who wanted you to succeed. So combine all of the traits from all of your best teachers and strive to be the most positive influence on these young people that you are going to teach. Don't teach for the money. Don't teach for the glory. And don't teach for those mythical summers off because I'm still waiting for mine. Um, teach because you are the essential part of every other profession. Teach to contribute to an educated society. But mostly teach because these kids need you. They need you as their future educator. Good luck. Thank you, Ms. Culverhouse. Um, each of you, Amber, Kaylee, Rayanna, um, you will be receiving the book, Oh, the Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. Um, it will be picked up, or you can pick it up when you pick up your senior items next week. Ms. Robinson is going to deliver those to the school for me tomorrow. Um, so since we couldn't pass those books around, we actually had teachers fill out a Google form because we love Google forms these days. Um, and so inside of your book, each of you have different, um, where teachers have sent in words of wisdom or words of encouragement for you. So be sure that you um, get that when you pick up your senior stuff. Um, we wish you all the best. And before Ms. Blankenship does our closing and our final thoughts, do any of the teachers um, want to say anything to these future educators? Okay. All right, Ms. Blankenship, if you would like to um, wrap this up with your final thoughts. Well, gosh, every, every final thought I had, they all said it already. So they, they, all three of them stole my thunder, but um, no, but Kaylee and Amber and Rihanna, man, I can't tell you enough how proud I am of you that you've chosen to go be an educator because it's like Ms. Culverhouse and some of the others mentioned, there's no more noble profession to be in than educator. And again, it's not for the money, it's not for the out income, it's for the outcome and you are going to make a difference in the lives of your kids that you touch each and every day. I knew when I was in the 10th grade that I wanted to be a teacher and a coach. I tried to vary from that um, path, and I came right back to teaching because I have the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of the students that we reach out and touch. You don't ever know. You may be uh, teaching the next president of the United States. You may be teaching the next great engineer, Kaylee, in middle school. You may be teaching Rayanna the next farmer that creates something that helps our world. Amber, I'm not sure, I can't remember what you're gonna be teaching, but I know that you're gonna make a difference in the life of that kid that may make a difference in the lives of others. So it's like Ms. Culverhouse said, without teachers, all these people that do all these things, it wouldn't be possible. So as we kind of wrap it up today, I just wanna give you a few thoughts. Um, to finish this up, again, I'm just so proud of you for what you're choosing to do with your life. Um, but I want to tell you, it's all about relationships. And the older I've gotten, and I've been doing this, this is my 34th year. Um, the, it's all about relationships. It's about learning your kids. It's about knowing your kids. And it's not really about the A, Bs, and Cs, the reading, writing, and the arithmetic. It's really about knowing who those kids are and knowing about them and building those relationships. And once you've done that with your kids, they'll do anything in the world for you. But the relationship piece, I can't encourage you enough to spend time getting to know the kids, know their families, know those things. You may not like everything kids do. You may not like how they act. You may not like how they talk. You may not like the lack of effort they do, but you always have to love them. You always have to care about them. You always have to give them your very best. One of our pastors said it well one time, if you don't look at the problem, you look at the potential. You gotta see through their heart, not just what's on the outside. So when you think about your kids, you're gonna get all kinds of kids, all different races, ethnicities. There might be poverty, they might be affluent, but it's really what's inside that makes a difference in those kids. And you, you're gonna reach on there and you're gonna touch the inside of them. You're gonna make a difference forever. 
So um, I saw this the other day uh, when I was out and about. It says, if you do something you love and are passionate about it, you'll never work a day in your life. And I think about that because when people say, where do you work? I'm like, I don't work. I go to school every day. I never go to work. It's really not a job. It's I come to school every day because that's where that's where I find my passion. That's where I find joy and happiness, seeing that I can make a success in the lives of others. And Ms. Uh, Coverhouse mentioned that you may or may not hear back from kids. Right now, I have two kids that called me, as a matter of fact, this past week, keeping me updated. One has a child. He's telling me what he's doing. One's just written a book. So, um, so they came from a poverty background, but they, they call me and they call me mama, or they call me, you know, their auntie. So you make a difference in the lives of kids, and there'll be some that they're going to stay in touch with you. They're going to keep up with you. So just build those relationships with the kids in your class. And the last thing I'm going to close with is one of my mentors and my great friends that somehow coerced me to be an administrator. I'm not sure what happened there. I must have had a middle moment. Um, but she always says that her mentor told her, care about people, three things to remember. Care about people, always tell the truth, do the right thing in the right way for the right reasons. And if you can do those three things, the impact that you're gonna make, like Ms. Coverhouse said, you're leaving a legacy with every one of those students that you, that you reach out to. You have a great network of teachers here that are for you. If you have questions, concerns, help, we're all here to help you. So I'm very, very proud of you. And I'm excited to see what um, the future holds for you, where you end up. And who knows, you may be back at Bryan County High School. So you never know. Ms. Chastain, you better watch out. She said she's coming for you. So, um, but anyway, but congratulations to you. It's an honor to be here with you today and a privilege to see future educators. Never take your job lightly because it is the, one of the most important jobs that there ever is. So thank you, Dr. Shields, for letting me be part of your celebration today. All right, well, y'all are, y'all have any more words of encouragement? I would like to thank you all for being here today. I know that it is past our three o'clock time. Ms. Donaldson, thank you so much um, for being here with us. Um, Amber, Kaylee, Rayanna, we will see y'all at graduation. <laughs>